Cork tape was invented by the devil. I hate it, but I have to use it because this is a warranty job and this is a service bullet. And they want me to use cork tape. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. All right, today is an interesting one. I already know what I'm getting involved in. I uh, came out here on a service call a couple weeks ago for the bottom section not working, but the top working fine. And uh, when I open up the box, I'll try to throw in a clip right now of what I opened up and you'll see. As you can see though, that thing is full of roaches. So, uh, the way that we uh, approached this was, this unit is supposed to be still under manufacturer's warranty, but we went to the customer and said, they ain't warranting none of this. So supposedly, they were gonna get their pest control people to take care of the problem, and then I'm coming in to sanitize and replace every single component where those roaches were at. So we're gonna open it up and see if they actually solve the problem or not. All right, this is the question right now, let's see. They're still in here. Yep, they're still in there. That sucks. So here's the deal. I can't guarantee anything. Um, all that I can do is change all the electrical components. I'll sanitize the inside of this wiring as best as I can. But until they solve this problem, I mean, we're gonna be back doing this again soon. But again, customer needs the box operating, so I'm gonna do what I can do. All right, what I'm doing is I'm gonna start a bucket where I'm just soaking parts while I'm doing everything. I'm gonna use the Viper Venom Pack All-Purpose Cleaner. Now, I'm gonna mix this super concentrated, guys. Normally, you wouldn't go this far. But this stuff's nasty, so I used about half the pack. I'm gonna fill it up with hot water, and then I'll fill up a sprayer and start spraying everything down on the reach end, too. This thing's nasty. Um, I'm changing all the parts in here anyway, so I'm just gonna soak this crap, you know? Let it sit on there. Start taking the parts out. I'm not really gonna clean the controls, but at least I'm soaking it. And this stuff has sanitizer in it too, but I'm gonna use an actual, their actual dedicated strike back sanitizer when I'm all done. So I'm just soaking everything down. Normally I wouldn't say soak electrical components like this, but guys, this is an extreme case and um, so be it. If I have a phone fan motor go bad, I'll order another one. This is one of those things where the customer knows they're gonna have to change a lot of parts on this. They didn't wanna buy a new reach in, so. All right. This is the one that I'm using, and I went super strong, guys. This is pure concentrate. That's insane amount right there. Okay, you gotta be very careful about this. Um, and you also wanna be careful about getting it on the stainless steel and stuff. You don't know what it's gonna do to it. I've never used this on stainless, so I'll be cautious to try to not get it on the stainless and just spray the condenser and stuff. But again, normally I would never advocate remixing this much, but that's pretty nasty. So we gotta do what we gotta do. Okay, I'm rinsing off the all-purpose cleaner and remember I would never rinse down a temperature controller like this but I'm replacing all of these so and these things are bad those switches are the only things I need to worry about I'll have to make sure those are dried out but yeah this is just one of those things where I don't care if I have to change other components I warn the customer this thing's so nasty that I'm not sticking my hands in here without cleaning it you know I would never normally do this but it's just disgusting it's bad in there Okay, I did my best and I'm not going to spend all day scrubbing this box. So I just got majority of the grease off. Got the condenser cleaned. The cabinet in here kind of degreased a little bit. It is not going to be perfect. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started on changing these components out. All right, so I'm starting by changing the uh, time clock wire for wire, nice and easy. And then we'll do the same with all the controls. And uh, I'm wearing this head scarf. Uh, not I'm, I'm outside so I don't wear a mask outside normally um, but uh, it's because it goes up over my neck and I kind of like it for when I'm working outside it protects me um, I just put sunscreen on my ears and put my hat on and then I don't have to worry about getting my neck sunburnt or anything so I also got to be careful because uh, I don't want to take any of these little guys home with me these little roaches so being sure to keep myself clear of everything so we go back with OEM parts no questions asked when you use OEM parts so it's a Delfield timer module it has the QRTUZ that means it has a battery backup 
So be cautious about picking up the ones from the supply house that don't say QRTUZ. If it says STUZ, then it doesn't have the battery backup. So just make sure you put the OEMs back in whenever possible. That way you eliminate any questions. It's not too bad. Should throw those nasty components on the other side. Get them out of here. All right, we're gonna put this back together. You guys don't need to watch me change every single component, so. All right, got all the controls changed out. Um, still gotta sanitize in here a little bit. I went ahead and ran a new, uh, or put a new uh, digital display on the front, but I haven't popped it in yet because I don't have a comm cable, I thought I did and it was a little corroded, so I tried to clean it up. But sometimes when you snap these in, they can be difficult to get out. So I wanna make sure it works before I snap it in. Um, I'm gonna take my blower real quick and just blow everything out, make sure we got all the water out of this guy. Just a little cordless Milwaukee thing. Just getting any water that might be somewhere where it shouldn't be maybe. Out of the switches. Yeah, see there's still a little bit in the switches. Probably shouldn't have soaked those. Okay, we're gonna plug this guy in and hope it doesn't uh, short out. All right. Um. How's the moment? Rail power. Oh, I got the unit power off. There we go. And that's probably hard for you guys to see. Solenoids on. Let's wait for the low pressure control to kick it on. Nothing yet. Scary. Low pressure control should be kicking it on. Oh, wait. No. No? Let's see what this thing's set for. Well, it's set for 10. And it has. That low pressure control should be kicking it on unless it's out of gas. Grr. All right, well, I'm gonna go through it and see what I figure out. All right, so I warned the customer that I had to fix this roach problem before I could diagnose anything else. So what I'm finding, and when I left last time, the cold rail was working, but the cold rail's not working now, and the bottom section's not working. I found that we had a burnt out solenoid coil, had power going to it, uh, replaced the coil. Before I replaced it, I went ahead and threw a solenoid magnet on there, made sure that the solenoid valve actuated and it did. So now both solenoid valves are calling. I heard them click on, but we're not running right now. So we need to test to see if we have an open low pressure control. Okay, so our low pressure control is open. So we need to find out if we actually have refrigerant in this unit. If we don't have refrigerant, then I'll be fixing a leak or who knows what. One thing after another, right? Just poking my nose around, I went ahead and opened these up, but I come over here and there's oil all over this suction line and uh, it's rotted out. This is a very common leak spot for these units. This is all oil on my fingers right now. So I bet you anything we have a rotted out suction stub tube on here. I was pretty confident the unit didn't have any gas so I just, with the power turned off, very carefully cut the suction process tube and yeah, there's absolutely no gas in the unit. So I'll put a Schrader on there real quick and blast it up with nitrogen and I can pretty much guarantee the leak's gonna be right on that suction stub tube. Well, I am absolutely 100% correct that, I think the leak is right here. Yeah, I'd say that's a leak. You know what though? This thing has multiple leaks. It's got one right there, and it's got one on the solenoid coil. Good grief. This stuff, man. This, uh, I noticed that this solenoid coil was burnt out, so I changed it, but uh, let's see this. Yep, look at that big old crack right there. Good grief, these guys. So 
So this thing has two leaks. It has one on the solenoid coil and one on the suction stub tube. My goodness gracious. Infested with roaches, bad compressor, bad solenoid coil. Go figure, right? All right, I'm back again, hopefully to be done with it. Um, it looks like their bug problem is solved because I'm not seeing them run around anymore. I still see some crap right here, but I don't know if that was from last time. I thought I cleaned it all. Um, I don't see, when I opened up the back of this unit, I didn't see them running around. I don't see them coming out of any of the new controls. All right, what we're gonna do is get that compressor replaced, the solenoid valve replaced, and then uh, hopefully, hopefully be done with this because I'm done working on this. I don't wanna work on it anymore. All right, we are getting ready to uh, pull this compressor out. I've got some nitrogen running through it. I kind of pre-sanded everything. Solenoid magnets on the valves. We're gonna end up changing this solenoid valve, this dryer, this compressor. We've got all the parts right here. Uh, pretty much everything staged. Got some wet towels right here. Just in case. Okay, we're gonna get these guys sweat in real quick. Got the nitrogen back on, it's running. It's flowing through the system. This guy needs to get pushed in just a tad more too. If I can. There it goes. I shouldn't be brazing with these gloves on.
Sometimes I don't do the smartest stuff, guys. Do as I say, not as I do. Nice, good, solid braze joint. I need to replace my torches because they're making a funny noise when I'm using them. I don't think there's any leaks, but the check valves or something are making a funny noise. So you see how I soldered those pieces together. Good. It's like a good solid braze joint. Delfield has a new tech bulletin that they just released that says they want cork tape on here. I personally hate cork tape, but that's their new tech bulletin. Apparently, that's going to solve the rusting out compressor ends like this one. So, I do have some with me. We'll wrap it up as per their tech bulletin. Burn the compressor capacitor. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it'll be functional. Man, I burnt the hell out of that dryer. It's all good though. Two last, bra oh, all these two braze joints, and then we got to do the solenoid valve. This one right here for the service fitting. I think we might melt that, so I need to move this.
Okay, look good. Now the fun part, the solenoid valve. Try to do this without melting everything inside here, but there's a lot of stuff nearby. It's gonna be fun. My legs are falling asleep. Try to utilize some of the wet rag refrigeration technologies. See if we can get that to keep this stuff up here from catching on fire. The reason why I don't like to use a wet towel as much is because the steam will mess up your braze. Making sure that it's going in the right direction, it's going up. <sighs> it's going to be a pain in the ass. I'd really like a way to be able to prop that up or something. Because, man. Okay, let's, I'm going to make a take a gamble here see if I could do this That was kind of a risk because there was nothing holding it from sliding off the joint, but it looks like it worked. I just had to be quick about it. Okay, so now we need to get this guy pulled off. Should have had some wet rag on that too. Hopefully this works. Good. Let's pull these off. Try to save as much of this stuff as possible because it's, you know, reuse it. Nice purge through the system. Direction again, verified. Solenoid valve on. All right, we're gonna clean up a bit and then start the evacuation. All right, I'm getting ready to do a vacuum and I just went ahead and put a gauge on the other side and doing a pressure test. I pressurized it up to 110 PSI. We're gonna let it sit for a few minutes just to make sure we don't drop in pressure. I don't anticipate any other leaks and I'm gonna start getting the vacuum pump ready. All right, the pressure test is looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and release it. All right, we're getting ready to start the evacuation. Everything looks good. I checked the oil level on the pump. I really like the fact that you can see it right there. Nice and easy. It also makes it very easy to change the oil too. Um, gas ballast is open. 
we've got the ball valves slightly cracked so that way it gets the weird spot you guys if you've used these valves any kind of Schrader core removal tools you'll know what I mean there's like this weird spot that if you open it there's trapped gas so do them in a slightly cracked position um, we're gonna go ahead and fire it up this has the uh, DC pump so it's a ramp up um, on this one right here we're gonna wait till we see about 1500 to a thousand microns when we see that, then we'll go ahead and close the gas ballast. Okay, the micron level has dropped significantly, so we're gonna go ahead and close the gas ballast now. Start pulling through the oil, and we're just gonna let the system sit here and run. Now, I do have the pump pulling from both sides right now. Eventually, I will probably ball valve this off and just pull from the suction side, but I wanna get the system levels really low. The vacuum's been running for a pretty good bit. Um, I valved off the liquid line so the micron gauge is actually getting a true reading right so it's pulling through the suction all the way through the system into the liquid line now I want to show you something you're uh, achieving a perfect vacuum is almost impossible um, especially on systems that are old this is a small system so I really don't think it's gonna have leaks but okay just understand vacuums are not always perfect guys okay uh, brand new systems, it's a lot easier to pull a perfect vacuum. On older systems, not so much, okay? But something that you have to understand is the proper way to pull a vacuum, okay? Understanding pulling all the way through the system towards the micron gauge, okay? Again, I know it's not always practical. Just knowing how to do it really helps you out. Now, um, in this situation, watch what's going to happen. I'm going to agitate this compressor. Now watch the micron gauge and you're gonna see it start to rise. Okay, as you shake the compressor, you're shaking non-condensables out of the oil. Moisture, refrigerant, well this isn't gonna be refrigerant, this is gonna be nitrogen essentially, because this is a brand new compressor. So, nitrogen and moisture and whatever out of the oil. So it's always important to understand that when you're trying to do a decay test, when we're all done, if you haven't agitated, if you haven't heated up the oil in the compressor, there's a possibility you could have pockets of non-condensable still in the system and that will affect your decay test, okay? Again, I'm not always perfect. I don't always pull the perfect vacuum, but I'm just trying to make you understand that there's things you gotta do and you have to know what's going on. So that way, when you go to do a decay test and I valve everything off and it flies through the ceiling, it may not be a leak, it might just be non-condensable still trapped in the oil, okay? We're gonna do it again. Now granted, this compressor's been sitting out in the heat Let's see if we rise anymore. It's going a little bit, but not as fast anymore. So we're gonna let this guy keep running. All right, I'm getting ready to hook up the R290. The first thing we need to do though, I've got my little rig right here. We've got the ball valve turned off as we need to open the can. Okay, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open it all the way. and get it propped back up in there, this little case from i -Core. The problem is, everybody asks me where I get this case, but apparently i is not making this refrigerant anymore. So it's a whole thing, but. All right, so then we're gonna purge right here. Okay, and then as we're threading it on the high side, we're gonna slowly crack it and purge it. Okay, we've got the uh, probes hooked up, connected, ready to go. We're zeroed out, let me zero one more time. Looks like we registered something there. We're looking for 150 grams. I'm touching something. This is what you got to watch out for when you're doing this really light measurement. See this, I think this hose rubbing up against the scale is messing it up. So let me fix that. Finally, calming down. All right, now we're going to open up the ball valve. 150 grams is what we want. It's going to go quick. There we go. That's the full charge. It's in there now, we charge through the high side. Now we're gonna take the hose off and put smart probes on it and watch the system operate and make sure there's nothing else wrong. I also gotta put the solenoid valves back on. All right, if I did everything right, this won't blow up. Um, pressures are equalized, solenoid. I need to tighten these, but they're on. I'll tighten them on here in a minute. Um, turn unit power on. The compressor will immediately turn on because the pressure control is gonna see pressure right now and then it'll pump down. So the rail is turned off, so it's literally just pumping down. So we know that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the rail on. Okay, and the top section is still in defrost, so we need to, I mean the bottom section is still in defrost, so we need to go over here. 
There goes the rail. The rail just turned on. And then this guy's in defrost, so we just hold this button down. There we go, it just came out of defrost. And let's see what it's set for. It's set for 36, that's good. We'll leave that like that. Evaporator fan motor's running. We're gonna watch this thing get chilly. It might be kinda hard because we're outside, but, and then I got a mess to clean up. I'm gonna tighten down these solenoid valves, but we're running now, both top and bottom. Cork tape was invented by the devil. I hate it, but I have to use it because this is a warranty job and this is a service bullet. And they want me to use cork tape on that suction line. But I hate this stuff. I don't even keep it on my truck. To be honest with you, up until a couple days ago, I told all my guys not even to keep it in their truck too for the longest time. But since this is a service bullet and one of my guys had to pick some up, so I took just a little bit from them, but I hate this stuff. So far, the bottom section's at 47 degrees and the top section is at 63 degrees. So it is coming down in temperature. The compressor is nice and warm. It is about 90 something degrees outside today. Uh, we've got a cool suction line coming back. So we're looking good. I'm gonna start wrapping things up and cleaning things up and just wait for this thing to satisfy. Been running for a little bit. The top's at 50, but you have to remember the top's getting hit with the sun and there's no pans in there. The bottom's about to satisfy at 38 degrees. We're running about a 20 degree evaporator. Yeah, that's actually not true because it's also running with the top section. It's a multiplex. So that evap temp's a little bit probably skewed, but it's not bad. Um, yeah, everything's looking good. Man, you gotta love that uh, um, head pressure on R290. It's bringing it back to R22 days, right? Um, all right, cool, I'm gonna take the probes off, and like I said, we're done. All right, with these customers, I've said it many times that you know people say, why don't you call the health department? Why don't you do this? Okay, first off, that'd be the stupidest career suicide that I could ever make if I called the health department on my restaurants. But to preface that, I typically don't work in disgusting restaurants, okay? Things happen. That's why pest control companies exist to eliminate problems, okay? In this situation, they had an issue. We got the pest control company involved and they eliminated the issue, okay? So stuff happens, okay? Just because you see roaches does not mean it's the worst thing in the world. It is disgusting, but immediately when I told the customer, emails started flying, pest control company was there, they eliminated the problem, okay? So don't be so disgusted with it. it. It does happen. It'd be one thing if I went back there consistently month after month and they still had the problem, then there'd be an issue. Okay. Now for the most part, I don't work in restaurants that have really disgusting issues. And like I said, occasionally they have some kind of an issue, but it's how they rectify the situation. Okay. So don't be so crazed about that. Sometimes people say, oh my gosh, you work in the most disgusting restaurants. If you think what I work in is disgusting, then you must not work in a lot of restaurants or you must not see the back of kitchens because it, what I see doesn't alarm me. It's kind of like, eh, you know, yeah, they need to do a little cleaning here and there, but it is not that big of a deal, okay? Um, roaches, yeah, that's a bummer. But when I told this customer, like I said, immediately emails started flying and they rectified the situation. The problem was solved, okay? So that's the biggest thing. Now, in this situation, that particular reach-in was under warranty, okay? Now, um... I told the customer the warranty isn't going to cover no roach problems. Okay. So that's, that's a whole nother thing. So the temperature controllers, all replacement of that, the time clocks, I didn't even push that through warranty because that wasn't the manufacturer's fault. Okay. Now the compressor replacement, I was able to push that through under warranty, but, um, that was, a uh, you know, that's because the compressor rusted out on the side of the thing. And that's, that's just a common issue with those. So I was able to help the customer out on that side, but I do have morals and I know that I can't make the manufacturer pay for something that that's not their fault. Even though I could probably claim it and the manufacturer would never know, I can't do that, okay? Because I do have morals and I have to be able to sleep at night. And the customer understands that, okay? I, I just tell them, look, this isn't right that they have to pay for this issue because this is a pest control problem. You gotta take care of that. And they were like, okay, you know? Um, also, you know, the big picture thing, you can't just go in there, assume you're gonna solve the problem, you know, with one temperature controller and move on. I had to look at the big picture and say, okay, this whole cabinet in here is infested with roaches. And and when it, and I didn't get clips of it, but when I pulled the temperature controller out and I shook it, they were coming out from the inside of it. The same thing for the top temperature controller and the time clock. That's why I was like, look, 
we got to change everything. And the customer was, you know, I tried to get them to replace the box, but the age of the box, it, the depreciation wasn't there yet. So, um, you know, financially it made more sense to repair it versus replace it. So they did. And I got them up and running. Uh, and it's now been about a week and you know, everything's been good. So, you know, it's not always perfect. We can't always, like I said in the video, pull that perfect vacuum. We can't always do all this stuff, but we just got to know that we have to try our best to do a good job. Um, hopefully that comes across in my videos because I try to express it as much as possible that I'm not perfect and that you're not perfect and nobody's ever going to be perfect, but you can just strive for perfection as much as possible, you know, being practical at the same time. But really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Leave me some feedback down in the YouTube comments. I really appreciate it. Uh, remember Monday evening, 5 PM Pacific. So long as I can get off work, I'm going to go live on YouTube and I'm going to talk about these videos. Okay. Um, Please do me a favor, check out the new website, hvacrvideos.com. Help to support the channel if you're interested, buy a shirt. Um, remember to support the channel another way too. Uh, if you're considering buying any tools and you find that truetechtools.com has good pricing, I can vouch for their customer service. I use True Tech Tools all the time. Use my offer code big picture one word and you'll save 8% off of your order. There's some restrictions that do apply, but you guys can figure all that stuff out, okay? And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We will catch you guys on the next one, okay?